how to beat extreme hunger is here. If you are tortured by thoughts about food, are trapped in the cage of food rules, feel overwhelmed by the prospect of full recovery from an eating disorder, or all of the above, you have got to get your hands on my newest book, How to Beat Extreme Hunger. Find food freedom without losing control. Not only does my Extreme Hunger book combine extensive scientific research with years of lived experience, both personally and that of my clients, but it guides you step by step to overcoming your food views, making peace with your body, and finding the freedom that you know you deserve. How to Beat Extreme Hunger is the first book about eating disorder recovery that's neurodiversity affirming, gender inclusive, and delves deep into both the physical and metaphysical work necessary to achieve full recovery. You'll learn about the entire spectrum of extreme hunger related topics, including how to eat when you're already weight restored, the difference between true hunger and emotional or binge eating, how to heal digestive issues, managing hormonal changes, and as a bonus, you'll learn exactly how to become trigger proof so that you can feel confident in your ability to withstand the feelings of guilt and shame diet culture has instilled on you. Grab either the paperback, ebook, or audiobook recorded by yours truly at livelabelfree.com forward slash extreme hunger book. And now let's get back to today's episode. Welcome to the Live Label Free podcast, where we talk about autism, ADHD, eating disorders, existentialism, and everything in between. I'm your host, Livia Sarah. Now let's get into it. If you clicked on this episode, you've probably heard of the term overshoot weight. It's a term I've mentioned in my blog post on experiencing extreme hunger while being weight restored, which I will link in the show notes, and I, of course, thoroughly unpack the topic of overshoot in my extreme hunger course. I also frequently get asked how long overshoot lasts and how to lose overshoot weight, which is why I wanted to record an episode answering all of your questions. You'll learn what overshoot is, why it's an important part of recovery, I talk about set point theory and BMI, and I share some game-changing mindset shifts that will make this process a lot easier easier. So first things first, what is overshoot? Simply put, body fat overshooting is the phenomenon of putting on more weight than your pre-eating disorder or quote-unquote target weight in recovery. There's a lot to unpack when it comes to defining how much extra weight defines overshoot. So I'll start off by stating that the weight you were at before you started messing with your food, for lack of a better description, is completely arbitrary right now. As most of us know and have experienced, an eating disorder often starts in early teenage years. So if you were to return to your pre-eating disorder weight right now, that would make your weight that of a child, a weight you probably should not return to if you want to achieve full recovery. And I do use the word probably here as I am fully aware that some people's pre-eating disorder weight may have been higher than their ideal body weight. This leads me to my next point, which encompasses ideal body weight, set point theory, and target slash goal weights. The set point weight theory states that each of us has a genetically programmed weight range that our body will try to maintain in order to ensure optimal biological functioning. It explains why some people are naturally leaner while others are healthier at a higher body fat percentage. In essence, the set point theory vindicates body diversity and is the central pillar of the health at every size movement, which preaches this idea that ideal body weight has no one size. Thus, your ideal body weight is the weight range in which your body naturally settles when you are engaging in a lifestyle that supports your optimal level of health, and it will be different from person to person. So if everyone has a different body fat percentage or 
weight range that is uniquely healthy to them, what about BMI? Well, as with many things in life, your ideal body weight or set point weight cannot be determined by anyone other than your own body. Just like your height, the size of your hands and feet, or the color of your hair, your body decides what you look like. Unfortunately, we live in a society where people believe they constantly must micromanage everyone and everything, including our own bodies. We dye our hair to quote-unquote look better and buy uncomfortable shoes to become taller or quote-unquote more attractive. And of course, there is nothing wrong with these things. I mean, if they help you feel more confident, you do you. However, there definitely is something wrong when we start putting our health and happiness in the hands of people that can and never will possess the knowledge of our uniquely capable bodies. As I explained in a recent podcast episode called The Shocking Truth About BMI, which I will also link in the show notes, BMI does not embrace body diversity in any way, shape, or form. And yes, pun totally intended here. BMI was a system invented in the early 1800s by researcher Lambert Adolphe Jacques Quetelet, who notably was nowhere near a medical doctor. Getzeles' desire to define the measurements of l'homme moyen, which means the average man in French, resulted in his invention of the Getzeles Index, which was later named Body Mass Index in 1972. Getzeles based his findings of human proportions and measurements solely on those of white European men, meaning that BMI was never even meant for the general population. Women, People of color, immigrants, poor people, and disabled people were completely left out of Getzeles' studies. So why is it that health professionals are still using this system today? What's even worse is that healthcare professionals often use your BMI in combination with your pre-eating disorder weight to define your quote-unquote target or quote-unquote goal weight in eating disorder recovery. Besides the fact that neither BMI nor your pre-ED weight are reliable factors in determining what you should weigh right now, another pair of factors that most professionals conveniently leave out of their calculation is the concept of energy deficit and energy debt. Now, if you are unfamiliar with these terms, I encourage you to listen to my episode on the biological importance of honoring your extreme hunger, in which I describe how one gets into energy deficit in the first place and how prolonged energy deficit leads to the buildup of energy debt. Once you understand the damage that energy debt causes, you can maximize your understanding of overshoot and why it's so damn important. With that said, the reason why overshoot is so important is because it's a prerequisite to allow complete physical recovery of your body, which, as we now know, is also directly related to your mental recovery. When you have spent years under eating, over exercising, or a combination of both in most cases, the body goes into a negative energy balance and must turn to internal sources for energy. This means your body will literally eat itself up as it leaches energy from your organs, your bones, and other important biological systems to ensure your survival. Of course, this energy must be paid back at some point, which our beautiful friend Extreme Hunger helps us out with big time. There is so much stigma around needing to eat a lot of food in recovery from restrictive eating, but what most people often forget is that you have so many calories to make up for. Not only do you have to make up for the calories you literally missed due to underfueling, but you also need to consume extra calories to ensure that there is enough energy available for the repair work of the internal damage done due to energy debt. 
These quote unquote extra calories are all on top of the calories you already need to eat to support your daily life, even if you never restricted your food in the first place. So in a way, it's almost like you're eating for three people, which completely justifies eating upwards of 9,000 or 10,000 calories per day, assuming your baseline daily caloric needs are around 3,000 calories. The importance of paying back energy debt is directly correlated to the importance of overshooting your weight. Do you think about food all the time? Perhaps you constantly look at what others are eating and compare your intake to theirs. Or maybe you know that what you're experiencing is called mental hunger, except you don't feel that your mental hunger is valid. If so, you are not alone, my friend. For years, I was consumed by food thoughts. My entire life revolved around when, what, where, and how I was going to eat. I secretly wanted others to eat more so that I felt I could eat more and I would equally become upset when others ate less because I believed I would then have to eat less too. If I had any appointments or events that involved food, I would spend days, if not weeks, ruminating on how I would quote-unquote balance my intake and create a buffer to ensure I didn't go over my planned amounts. If you resonate with any of that, I don't think I have to tell you that thinking about food 24-7 is absolutely exhausting. Not only does it steal your precious brain space, but being obsessed with food steals your life away. If you want to gain your life back, or rather discover a new one so you can finally experience the peace and mental calm that comes with being fully recovered, my course Extremely Hungry to Completely Satisfied is here to help. Extremely Hungry to Completely Satisfied is a self-paced virtual online program that guides you through every step you need to take to go from being obsessed with food to living a life of freedom. It contains eight modules that dive deep into topics including how to recognize different types of hunger, how to differentiate mental hunger from emotional eating, how you should eat to stop binging, tips for coping with weight gain, information on weight overshoot and when you'll reach your natural set point weight, how to heal digestive issues, what it takes to balance your hormones, and so much more. Everything I've ever been asked about overcoming extreme hunger, you'll find it in my course. Enroll in Extremely Hungry to Completely Satisfied today by visiting the link livelabelfree.com forward slash course. So that's livelabelfree.com forward slash course. I cannot wait for you to embark on your journey to freedom. And now let's get back to today's episode. Just like you need to consume extra calories for a consistent period of time to pay back that energy debt, you will also need to carry extra body fat for a sustained period of time to ensure optimal healing circumstances. You know how when babies are born, they're all cute and chubby and fat, or how kids gain a lot of weight during puberty and then suddenly shoot upwards during their growth spurt? Well, biology has not done this for sits and giggles, although looking back at chubby baby photos may be funny now, Um, but fat storage is absolutely essential for growth and repair of any kind. So no, you may not need to gain height anymore, but all of the internal damage that you cannot see must have sufficient energetic reserves to be repaired. Okay, so now that you know just how important it is to honor your extreme hunger and allow yourself to gain a lot of weight or whatever amount of weight you need to gain, you may be wondering, how long will I have to carry this extra weight? How long does the overshoot last? The simple answer is as long as it takes for your body to fully pay off energy debt. Once you have repaired all of the internal damage and are no longer in energy deficit, the body has no reason to store additional energy and will naturally settle within your ideal body weight range as previously explained by the set point theory. And I know this is probably not the answer you want to hear, but again, no one else can determine the look or duration of your healing process besides 
your own body. Unfortunately, this lack of clarity about how long overshoot lasts is also where most people go wrong in recovery. What often happens is that someone will be doing really, really well recovery-wise, meaning they're honoring all forms of extreme hunger, they're allowing themselves to rest, and they're accepting natural weight gain. When they continue to gain weight and then go into overshoot, however, the unhelpful comments may start and said recovering individual may feel uncomfortable and fearful that they will stay at this higher weight forever. The saddest part of all of this is that healthcare professionals may even recommend weight loss because overshoot often results in a BMI that is higher than in quote unquote the healthy weight range. So the person who was doing so well now actively tries to lose weight again. And this is such a shame. After all the hard work they've done to challenge their eating disorder both physically and mentally and literally being so close to the finish line by allowing full healing by going into overshoot, all of this hard work is then suddenly undone the moment they start to lose weight again. Why? Because weight loss that has not naturally been initiated by the body signals to the body that there are not enough resources available to heal. And what does the body do when it believes there is a lack of abundance? It starts to conserve energy, and the whole process of distrust starts all over again. All that said, if you want to reach true full recovery, you must lose this mindset of wanting to lose your overshoot weight. I know this is so difficult as it means fully surrendering to the process and, of course, surrendering to your body, but surrender is the only way through. And that's a wrap for today's episode. I hope it inspired you or perhaps gave you the permission you've been looking for to continue gaining weight. If this episode was meaningful to you in any way, please screenshot you listening and tag me on Instagram at livelabelfree so more people like you can listen and learn and allow themselves to go into overshoot. As always, thank you so much for spending this time with me and I will catch you in the next episode. Bye! Baby, just one foot in front of the other